How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week 14, and we are done with all our regular season games. So we have back-to-back -back bye weeks to deal with, and then likely a bye week for the conference championship before we get into our bowl season and hopefully the playoffs. Right off the bat, we'll just get through this first bye week. There's a couple of ranked games, but it's nothing too crazy. So we have like one visit to schedule and then maybe a couple of scholarships to offer. So Jason Stone, the 75 overall wide receiver, is going to come this week with all the other players that are showing up this week. And then uh, we have like seven guys that we haven't offered scholarships to. And we'll give two of them scholarship offers because they're not... Most of them aren't any good. So let's just go by our overall because I know... Let's see. Kev, uh, Kenneth McCauley, 70 overall strong safety. I don't think he just insta-committed, which is kind of a shame. Uh, and then it's Donnie Boner. Just because he's got a hilarious name, we're going to offer him as well. And we got the insta-commit. So I guess we got the, the Boner on our team. And we'll see how that goes for the future. I definitely didn't expect that one to happen. Uh, we can level up our coach. We are level 26 now, and I'm tempted maybe to go with another pipeline, but we're just going to keep stacking them in all sorts of these uh, coaching game management skills. So that's the week 14 done. We can go ahead and head in advance now to week 15 and get through the second bye week, and maybe we'll see if there's a lot of chaos that happened this week, or maybe in week 15 there'll be a lot. We need to move up a few spots, I think if we're gonna have any chance in sneaking into the playoffs. John Arnold, our offensive coordinator, has leveled up, and there's some commits. RJ Rivera, the 79 overall running back, and Mark Lewis, the 79 overall strong safety commit. We had good visits, but we're in a lot of recruiting battles with uh, most of the rest of our guys. So there's a five-star and a four-star signed. Uh, and again, let's just level up the coaching, make sure that we get that as good as possible for these upcoming games. And we're just going to continue to up throw power and throw accuracy. We need more East State to be the best passer possible. And while we're on the topic of recruiting, let's just go ahead and knock some of that out of the park if we can here. Uh, if we go by our overall, it's starting to look really good. Basically, anybody who is decent is getting punts. Unfortunately, Lee Williams, I don't think that's possible. Um... Well, Coastal hasn't offered this guy a scholarship yet, so who knows? Maybe we can steal the 78 over uh, athlete in the offseason. Otherwise, let's just make sure that we can get the best players possible to commit. And I think I like what I'm seeing there. We do have two more guys that we can get visits for. Chad Johnson, the corner at 76 overall, and Kenneth McCauley, the strong safety. That's going to be a complimentary visit as well. So that might help us pick up another recruit. And then how about a look at ESPN? We moved up to number 10. I didn't notice that. That's great news. It looks like Michigan didn't lose, unfortunately. So they will be playing in the Big Ten uh, Conference Championship game. But why is it that we jumped up two spots what upsets did we see? Wisconsin did lose to Minnesota, so huge for that one. And Notre Dame lost in overtime to a now number 24 Stanford. Uh, and then Ohio State losing to Michigan and Navy losing to Tulane. Fresno State dropped out, but we are oh so close. And I guess not playing in a conference championship game could be really big because you could see some of these highly ranked teams maybe get knocked out in a conference championship week. So we are getting oh so close and we can go ahead now and advance to that conference championship and we'll take a look to see where everybody sat at the end of this one, see who's playing for what and when there's no conference championship games, we'll see who it is that managed to win their conference. Okay, well, this has been a really successful start to the episode for recruiting. Edwin Clay, the 79 overall wide receiver commits, and Chad Johnson, the 76 overall corner commits. So that is huge news. Uh, ranked in the top 10. So we're getting that XP and then a, two more four-star prospects as we are up to number nine. So more chaos starting to happen across the board. What's happening in the top 25? Was it like Army that lost? No, Army able to beat Navy. Texas beats Texas Tech. Uh, and that's good news for us. Auburn and Georgia will play. We want Georgia to win that game. And Michigan, Wisconsin. I think we want Michigan to win so that Wisconsin can't jump us. But why did people drop TCU? Lost a bad one to West Virginia. So the number six team in the country fell. And that puts us right on the outskirts of making it into the playoffs as a 9-3 and three team. 
That is something else. Uh, all right, conference championship week is here. Who is playing who in the MAC? It is Bowling Green taking on Central Michigan in Conference USA. It's Western Kentucky and Louisiana Tech. The SEC is Auburn and Georgia. The Mountain West is Fresno State and Colorado State. Notre Dame and Virginia in the ACC. USC, Oregon State in the Pac-12. And in the Big Ten, it is Michigan and Wisconsin. And unfortunately, we kind of have to root for the Wolverines to win this one. It, one, it kind of helps our conference if they continue to stay highly ranked. But also, if Wisconsin wins, they could very easily jump us. And that is the last thing that we want. As far as conferences, they don't have a conference championship game right now. Tulane looks like they beat Navy, although Navy's ranked super high, right? Uh... Or was it Army that's ranked? It's Army that's ranked super high. Well, it's a tie there. Three-way tie in the conference between Tulane, Navy, and SMU. Tulane being at the top, I imagine that they were able to get that tiebreaker. Texas is able to win the Big 12, 9-0 in conference, 11-1 overall. So they'll certainly be making the playoffs. Our two independents, Army going 11-1, number four in the country, but then BYU down at 5-7. and seven. Uh, Let's see. Oh, that's right. We beat them in week one. We are the one loss of the season. We beat them in overtime right at the start of the gate. So maybe a reason why we kind of belong is that we have some impressive wins and our losses are to good teams. Uh, other than that, let's see. Did they beat anybody good? They beat our Coastal team, unfortunately, and they beat Stanford. But other than that, a pretty weak schedule. I don't know if that's necessarily deserving of a top four, but they did go 11 and one. So maybe they do deserve it. Uh, the last conference, the Sun Belt looks to have been won by South Alabama, USA, six and two in conference. Uh, Louisiana Lafayette also there at six and two. But let's see who won that game the, against USA. It looks like the what's it? The Jaguars won it. So they're going to take the Sun Belt title for this season. A uh, quick look at the end of season, or pretty much end of season Heisman look. It is the Army running back Alex Perry doing work. Uh, what does he have? Uh, 253 carries for 1,700 yards. So Army probably running the patented triple option that everybody sees. Uh, John Jackson, the Auburn quarterback, is right up there. The Navy running back, USC quarterback, and Clemson quarterback as well. All probably going to get a trip to New York. Well, conference championship week, we have nothing to do other than hope that some chaos happens. So we'll go ahead and advance to the bowl season. Right now, it looks like we're projected for the Outback Bowl, but I have my fingers crossed that we will be playing in the playoffs. Well, there it is. Alex Perry does win the Heisman. A close voting between him and the Auburn quarterback, 1333 to 1307. That is pretty dang close. Uh, and look at those first place votes, 241 to 235. So just uh, really coming down to the wire on who deserved that one. So the question is, what other awards can we win? And did we make the playoffs? We're number eight. They have us against number 15 TCU in the Cotton Bowl, but we have not run the playoff generator yet. Uh, Carter wins the Bednarik and the Nagurski and the Vince Lombardi. Oh my goodness. So the three trophies that we win all going to Carter. And I would say it's probably deserved. But again, we are number eight in the country. So it's time for us to bring up the utility tool and we will go ahead and run the college football playoff simulator try to get everything set up and if you haven't done this in a while they did update the tool so it's got uh, a look that kind of matches espn a little bit better now so we are doing an eight team playoff so we can go ahead and start that with step one and again if you need to update this just launch uh the utility tool and it'll come up with a prompt to download it automatically so we can go ahead and load in our user data file and fingers crossed that we're going to make the playoffs. I wouldn't mind playing a good TCU team, but oh, it would be so much better if we could sneak into the back door, maybe have some sort of Cinderella run to the national championship game. And not going to be the case. Oh, no, no. What is this? Oh, my goodness. So Oregon State won the Pac-12, so they get an auto bid. Uh, LSU is the runner up in the SEC, but just had a really good season. So they're in Georgia win the SEC and they're in Texas wins the big 12 and they're in Michigan wins the big 10 and they're in central Michigan gets the at large bid 12 and one winning the Mac army and Notre Dame. Oh, that is so brutal. We get left out. Oh, the controversy, but I'm not going to reverse this. 
sometimes that's just the way it works. I think we belong in over a 8 and 5 Oregon State. I think we belong in over a 12 and 1 Central Michigan and a Notre Dame that has pretty much the same record as us, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. So we can go ahead and save that playoff. A little bit disappointing. Who did we have? Uh, we're playing against the number 10 Clemson. So I guess Clemson maybe also has a right to be upset. That's the quick lane bowl. A very interesting one. But we can just go ahead and save that. And looks like it's just going to be one game for the playoffs this season or for our bowl season this year. And that is just so disappointing. So I guess I probably could have been prepared for that if we took a look at who won the conference championship games. Because uh, that is something that I failed to do. So yeah, it's Central Michigan beating Bowling Green in the MAC. Uh, Louisiana Tech beat Western Kentucky for the CUSA. Georgia beats Auburn in the SEC. And Auburn actually gets left out 11-2, number 7 in the country. So they have a right to be upset as well. Colorado State wins the Mountain West. Notre Dame wins the ACC. And the reason why they're in, even though they're 10-3 and and number 11... Uh, but Oregon State, 35-28, the big upset over USC. USC should have been in, uh, but the Beavers unranked win it, get themselves ranked, and somehow make it to the playoff. That is something I'm not sure we would see for a while in real life, but hey, go Beavs. Jonathan Smith, I guess, taking them there. And then Michigan barely beat Wisconsin, 14-15. to The Wolverines hold on, and it's a couple of failed two-point conversions. That's interesting. They were down quite a bit, so maybe they felt like they had to go for the two-point conversions. It was 14-3, to but then the fourth quarter, they started to try and open that one up. Well, this is really unfortunate, but I have no fix. Uh, my backup was apparently uh, not since week six where we played Nebraska, and when I ran the playoff tool, it crashed, and the backup in... The playoff tools files is this Nebraska backup. So uh, the only solution I see is just to reset the season. And uh, it's going to really screw us over on our rankings, I think. But I don't see anything else that we can do. And that's really, really disappointing. Well, I'm honestly really heartbroken at the way that all worked out. Um, this is what our playoffs look like now. Uh, I'm so upset. Uh... Michigan, Texas, UCF, Ohio State, Auburn, Notre Dame, Clemson, and USC. Few teams are different. Few teams got lucky. Uh, our recruiting, absolutely awful now. Uh, just simmed through it all. It's not worth my time to go through and try to recruit every week to get everything the same. So we're just going to take a, a big hit into next year that we wouldn't have otherwise. I didn't do anything different from how I ever use this uh dynasty tool so something weird just happened and uh now we are uh, much worse off let's just put it that way so instead of uh ranked tcu we went eight and four number 19 in the country and we're playing apparently louisville in our bowl game so uh much more winnable game let's just hope that my rpc s3 doesn't continue to glitch out because it's been a real struggle and okay well it's still playable now <laughs> it's just everything has changed uh kind of disappointing but uh we'll just pretend that we were asleep for most of the season and we woke up from our dream and played it through and, and we had some different outcomes certainly not the way i want it to work but i mean sometimes that's the way things happen when you're on an emulator and you're editing files. Uh, who knows what our top players are really actually looking like. These are supposedly our best guys for next year. Uh, so who knows what to take from this. A lot of injuries. Right guard, tight end, and a right tackle out. So the offensive line certainly in, uh, injured. Wow, that's crazy. Three season ending injuries. Zach Wilson, the tight end, is among them. But we'll try to come out and win this bowl game. And set ourselves up for a good spot for next season. My bad, I had the cursor on the screen there. Uh, Bank of America Stadium, the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Let's try and get this one done. Get out of this cursed year, move on to next year, and hope that we can get a little bit lucky. Uh, as long as we can win this one, at least we'll have something going for us. We were unable to score 69 in the last game. If we have the opportunity in this one, 
You better believe I'm going to do it. We are now angry and we want some revenge. And Frank Blair unable to take a kick return to the house all season long. Takes the bowl game kick return almost into the end zone. He didn't get tackled, but he does get knocked out of bounds after a 93-yard return. And apparently this might be the reason the team went 8-4 and four instead of 9-3. and three. Albert Johnson was starting on the depth chart uh, as this is Durham Fitch Jr.'s final game with the team. Albert on the read option, fights through some contact into the end zone, and just like that, 15 seconds off the clock, and we are in for six. Well, uh, we're kicking this one away. Uh, hope for the best here. And I just feel so frazzled uh, after that mix-up with the files and everything. In the snow... Let's get this one done. I want the defense to dominate today. Not certain that that's going to happen, but we can hope for the best. They're going to run the counter on first down, and my user is apparently terrible. As it always is, Jared Smith gets nine yards on his first carry. Uh, one thing certain, having the, the recruiting mess up is going to hurt us quite a bit. Uh, we had some really good pickups. RJ Rivera, I was excited to see what he could do as Ron Johnson gets burned, and this one could be a big touchdown. The blocking downfield is impeccable. Whitaker gets a touchdown saving tackle there, and it's big plays early in this one. Anyways, like I was trying to say, with Durham Finch leaving and us not getting RJ Rivera yet, I think our off-season recruiting is just going to have to be all in on the freshman running back. We need somebody to replace him as they're going to try the run and somehow manage to get a couple of yards. Just like the last game that we played against uh, Maryland, Louisville coming out in a big hurry up. Second and eight. I don't know, they're in the hurry up, but then they go slow, stepping back to throw, and... Well, it's a slant route, but I paused the game, and he dropped the ball. <laughs> okay, let's watch that one in the replay because uh, obviously I kind of screwed that up. Pass thrown, and it was just dropped. You can really tell how rattled I am just by the fact that I'm playing so, uh, I don't know, all over the place. Commentary's getting weird. We're bringing pressure. Five wide receivers in the formation, and another drop pass for Louisville that would have tied the game up. Instead, it's fourth and eight. We absolutely got bailed out there. They're setting up to kick this field goal, and it's probably going to be 7-3. I maybe had the chance to jump that one, but stop the momentum of Frank Blair. Kick is good, and we maintain the lead for now. Well, 7-3, to three. you know, typically we sim these kickoffs after the first one of each half, but I need Frank Blair to get a kick return at some point in this season. I don't know if it'll be today, but Frank Blair is doing a lot for the special team. Somehow sneaks free 60 yards on that return. Well, we can bring Maurice Tate back in as the quarterback, and we'll try to throw with him for his first pass of the game. That was caught by Jeff Fontana. That was a huge catch by the freshman. Second and one. Might as well just continue to throw, right? Maurice is feeling it. Maybe we get outside the pocket. Right bumper was wide open. A was wide open. But, you know, I just can't trust Maurice early in these games. He may have been accurate on that first pass attempt, but who's to say he wouldn't just completely sail it over the heads of everybody on the second one? Durham Finch gets a nice carry on the read option for five. That brings us inside the 10. And the good news is we can still pick up a first down at this spot, so we don't necessarily need to get into the end zone right away. Durham up the middle on this one. Watching what the linebacker does, we cut to the edge and get five more yards. It's third and one. And I think we got to hand it off to the man again. Uh, it's actually Stan Williams coming in. His first carry, not enough for the touchdown. Stopped just short at the line. There's no way that we can continue to mess this up, right? No way that we see a goal line stand. Durham into the end zone. There we go. 14 to 3. Opening up the lead early in this one. All right. Well, maybe the defense can get another stop. I consider field goal stops. And they did a great job last time. They're bringing this one out. This could be really disastrous. Their offense not going to have the best field position to work with. And we're going to be really aggressive in the coverage today. I know that they're not going to run nearly as much as Maryland, but if we can stop the run that well, then they're going to have to start passing anyways. Working out of the dime early in this game seems to be working pretty well. Expecting passes on some of these early downs. We'll see what we can do. Man goes in motion. Wouldn't be surprised. No, they do keep to the air. Wagner all the time in the world and just has to throw it away. The coverage was blanketing on that one. 
So on the third and 13, a chance for us to get off of the field in the cover six. They're going to run the ball. Could be a good decision, but just not enough yards. Nine yards for Jared Smith, but we get the stop eventually. And as far as we're concerned, what that means is that Frank Blair gets to head back out on special teams. He's having a solid game so far in the snow. Uh, a couple of blocks. Who knows? This could be absolutely impeccable as that was really weird i tried to get to the edge and just couldn't you know it's an interesting game when starting across the 50 is your worst field position of the game triple option open up this drive maurice tate he's gonna have the late pitch and durham finch jr can't quite break the tackle he had blockers out in front of him that is just a real bummer as we are gonna just keep handing it off to him he's doing really well so far in this game why get the ball out of his hands especially as it's the seniors final game second and four we will step back to pass maurice not quite on fire yet got to be careful with whatever throws we make over the middle there's jeff fontenot and he's gonna score the blocking came out of nowhere the play broke down for louisville and it's gonna be 21 points scored in the first quarter already Oh, man. Well, I mean, the team might not have really won that game against Maryland, like 52-3, to but they're coming out playing like they did and trying to get themselves into a good position for next season because that's what matters at this point. Expecting a run on this first down. Try not to get burned too much. Man comes in motion. It's going to be... Oh, I thought it was a play action. I 100% th thought it was a play action. We had the chance to stop Smith in the backfield, but I turned to go for the quarterback. So they're going to get away scot-free on that play. And this time we make the right call. We do tackle the running back for a loss of a yard. I will say there is a chance that I go in and edit some of the recruiting stuff because a few of those players that we got, we worked really hard for but it's just going to have to depend on what it looks like at the end of the day. First and 10 now. This one's going to be another run. They are running the ball with ease against our dime package because I've just been expecting them to pass the ball, but they're doing a lot of running on the ground. I don't really know what that sentence meant, but I guess it's true. Let's bring some pressure. They do step back to throw this time, and it's going to be caught, but Blair's there for the early tackle. So just gives up two yards. And these guys are in the hurry up, but I don't think they're going to get this final playoff. Two, one, and there it is. The end of the first quarter. Up three scores. Not feeling too bad about it either. Big plays, and we just have to continue this. Try to end this now cursed season on a good note. All right. Uh, they've been running the ball quite a bit early in this one. We're going to expect that. This is a play action. We got to the quarterback with Logan. That is a huge sack to force a third and 12. They went with the play action. And this time, I, again, you know, I bought it. But we able, were we were able to. Oh, my gosh, I can't talk. We were able to get the stop, unlike on this third down. Maybe if I could talk, I could focus on the gameplay a little bit better. Somebody call an ambulance because I'm having a stroke. This is this is a struggle. Miller out of position, but they're going to run, so the safety's able to get into position. Jared Smith just kind of running all over the place on us at this point. It's a little bit frustrating. This one's going to be a draw for a loss of three. And again, a third and nine. Can we get the stop? Maybe force them to kick another field goal. Going to change things up. Just rush three on this one. We know that they're going to pass the football, so we can hope that things go well quarterback all the time in the world throws it back in the end zone dropped by Blair oh that would have been a huge interception but he just can't quite come up with it so the play calling works but they were still going to give up points fourth and nine for Louisville kick is up and that one's good that one makes it 21 to six and I'm just gonna hope that we can continue to open this one up as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I want to run the score up. I know it could help, but I want to get some backups playing. Hopefully avoid any sort of transfers at the end of the year. You know, we don't have to really worry about injuries at this point, but every backup that we can have run a couple of plays could be big for the program. A little triple option with Jeff Fontenot coming in motion. And oh man, they took him out of the play. I was going to try to make a risky pitch. Instead, we just get a yard and we are going to... Look to pass on this second down. Looking maybe for something easy. We give it to Mitchell. Not as many yards as I would have hoped for Sean. Just two. Brings up a third and six. 
And Maurice has started the game 3 of 3 through the air, but this is going to be the first tester. Stepping back to throw. A was open. Can we get it there? Curtis, a great catch. And more importantly, that was a perfect pass by Maurice. He put that into the right spot. That's able to kind of open some stuff up. Bryant Curtis, I think, could have had that one picked off. Uh, if Maurice threw that towards the sideline like I normally would have expected is Durham Finch just kind of shaking guys out of their boots there. So that one works really well, and it'll be first and 10. It looks like they want to bring pressure. We're going to send Jeff Fontenot deep. We know that that has been working well. They're not going to cover him. This should be a touchdown if it's accurate. Maurice overthrew him. Oh, that's brutal. You might be able to blame that one on the cold, but I don't think that's excusable. When somebody's that wide open, a uh, starting college quarterback can't miss that. So instead, we'll take off on the ground, make sure that we're getting our yards and our first downs, but it should be 28-6 to six right now. Let's just put it back on the ground. Give it to Durham Finch. The running game hasn't really disappointed us yet, so we'll just continue to let him continue to churn out yards. I really don't know how to talk today, huh? What kind of sentence is that? We can continue to let him continue to turn out yards? Oh my goodness. How about this triple option? Didn't work with Jeff Fontenot. Will it work with Sean Mitchell? I want to run it to the wide side of the field. See if we can make the right reads and we'll see if they take away the pitch from us. Oh, I tried to pitch it late there. There's a face mask though. Although Maurice is a little bit injured. It was a holding, not even a face mask. That is... Two slaps to the face. Stan Williams gets called with it. So it's now second and 12 instead of a first and goal. And Albert Johnson has to come in at the quarterback spot, which is bad news for our offense. Durham Finch just gets absolutely stopped at the line. Abstrain for Maurice. So he will be back in this game. But Albert having to make a really tough throw with a cold arm, which certainly isn't looking too good. And he had Brian Curtis open, but just couldn't find the accuracy so i'm just going to elect to take the points here we'll keep the lead increasing make sure that we're always adding points on our drives it's a 41 yard field goal up and good a little bit closer than i would have liked but it's good to know that we have a decent bit of range and with two minutes left in this half kick this one away and see what the defense can do done a decent job getting stops i would love to see a turnover at some point in this game though Inside two minutes, I would probably expect these guys to be passing the football a little bit more. So we'll see what we can do to try to defend that over the middle. Wide open. It's Frank Blair again getting beat off the line. We do have some really solid uh, players in the secondary. It just seems like they're never consistent enough as this one is more getting beat on an out route for four yards. And what sucks on a play like that is they get out of bounds to stop the clock. So who knows? Maybe it could end up helping us in the long run. But as far as I'm concerned, still pretty brutal. This is a slip screen that I am late to react to. But more is there to force him out of bounds. We do get the third down. And I fully expect this to be a pass. Third and three. He's got uh, technically a wide receiver in the backfield. Carter gets there. Logan. Out of position, Miller gets the stop. Oh my gosh, so many chances to drop them for a loss, and it's fourth and inches. And it's the punt team out for Louisville, but there's no way we can trust this, right? Maybe I should be taking a timeout. Yeah, they're burning the clock. I'm, I gotta take a timeout. A little bit late, but better late than never. Uh, I just messed up. Called the field goal safe man instead of the punt safe man. We'll see if we can get Frank Blair back in time. They're not gonna... Uh, kick the field goal, but they will punt it away. And Blair, thankfully, doesn't take a weird bounce and hit him. We'll take the touch back. Probably could have had a good return, but say la vie. All right, a minute and six. Maurice comes back in as the QB, and I'm going to be looking to, I don't know, pass the ball well. Maurice outside the pocket. That was scary. This is a stupid throw. Even a deep Brian Curtis. It's picked off. I. Right. What am I thinking? <laughs> he is stumbling backwards. I uh, was just an arm punt on first down. That was the dumbest play we've run in like two or three games. If they score a touchdown now with this last uh, minute on the clock, it's entirely on me. That was foolish. See what we can do. Trying to bring some pressure. Hitting the quarterback. He slips the sack. And we get the pick. Ron Johnson can't stay in bounds. <laughs> Guess that's one way to get some field position. 
I feel like almost we got a little bit lucky there. I tried to go for the strip instead of the easy sack on the quarterback, so he was able to break the tackle. But then he threw it into triple coverage. Durham Finch cutting it back across the field, breaking a tackle. That's going to be 22 yards. And the perfectly timed counter. And now with the clock stopped, we can go in the hurry up and step back and try to pass. A could be open. B is for sure open. Again, I just got to keep running. If you've got a quarterback with good legs, we got to use them in these situations. That gives us a first and goal with two timeouts. And I'm going to use those timeouts. We're going to hand the ball off to Durham Finch here. Let him run up the middle. He picks up a block. Bad cut, but he gets into the end zone anyways. And that turned into a really quick drive, and we'll make it 31-6. to Now, this is an interesting spot. I don't want to go for the onside kick because I don't want to give them great field position, but I still want them to try to run their offense so that they can't uh, just run the clock out. So we're going to squib it and give them decent field position. And then we're going to bring some pressure, expecting them maybe to run. No, they will actually pass. And over the middle, oh, if we could have got the interception, could you imagine? It would have been the right play. Louisville takes their first time out. And now that I know what they're going for, I can feel confident in trying to bring some pressure here. Tight end in motion could cause some problems for us. Just trying to create another turnover. Pressure on the quarterback. He has to throw that one away. That'll stop the clock and bring up a third down. And they could still run the football here, but I don't really see that happening. No, it is going to be a handoff. Can we get there? There's the stop fourth and one. I'm calling the timeout. So again, the defense with a close stop, and they're going to be out here supposedly punting the ball away. This would be the time to fake it, but it is booted away. We will take a touchback. We got 14 seconds to go 80 or so yards. I don't know. With one timeout, I don't think this is necessarily uh, high chances of this one working, but we're still going to send it and hope for the best. Heave it up. Fontenelle, could he come down with it? No. Lucky that one wasn't picked off, but hey, I'm going to send it on a lot of those. Any chance we have to get extra points, I feel like is worth taking. Just a four vert to end this one. We'll keep Durham Finch as an extra blocker. He's on fire, but unfortunately, he's not going to be a part of this play as they stopped running. They all stopped running. Wilson actually almost came down with that. That would have been insane. Well, we might as well go for one more. I mean, I don't know how you're supposed to throw up a four vert when your guys stop running as <laughs> we're going to get sacked to end the half. Oh, well, things could have ended better, but hey, we're up 31 to 6. I can't complain about that. I really wish we were playing Glumson. I don't think we would be up this much. I think it would probably be an actually competitive game, but that's what happens when you apparently wake up from a dream season and then have to sim through seven games. Uh, just a real shame how that turned out. Um, hopefully that doesn't bum you guys out as much as it's bumming me out, but we're going to make the most of it and just prepare for next season. And again, we're just trying to win this one emphatically so that we can get up high in the polls and then, you know, make a mark on recruits and be ready for a championship run next year. As we kick this one off to start the second half, I do want to ask you, oh my gosh, I just can't talk at all today. I do want to ask you guys to like the video if you're enjoying it. If you're liking the beatdown we're putting on these guys in the snow, uh, it really does mean a lot. Uh, how about this? One like equals uh, one correct word or sentence said by Goon. Certainly, I need all the help I can get. Uh, something's in my eye, so one eye closed, and the defense was still there. You know, these guys have a really good running game, but they're just trying to pass. Second and ten, trying to do something. We're going to press, trying to get to this quarterback. I'm having a hard time. He's throwing it. Frank Blair was well out of position. We got them at a third and short. Question is, what can we do with this? Trying again to bring any sort of pressure. If we can get to this quarterback, we'll have a chance on the third one. It's a QB blast. Great play call. Miller's there to get the stop, but not before they pick up the first down. I'm just going to try to continue to bring that pressure. All I want to do is get a strip sack here, get the offense out on the field, and this quarterback releasing it into double coverage, and again, a dropped interception from Frank Blair. We're actually getting outgained in total yards by Louisville, 181 to 1. But it doesn't seem to be causing too big of a problem at this point. Stepping up to throw, we do get the stop. Kenny Bass, for the second week in a row, a guy with the last name of Bass is kind of 
dashing us on defense. And I'm just going to continue to bring pressure until they run the ball. I know that this running back is a big threat, so anything we can do to stop them is that one goes out of bounds. And it's fourth and three. I actually hadn't realized that it was third down on that one. So they had the guy open, but just kind of lobbed the pass there instead of bulleting it to him. And he's unable to get north for the yards. So the defense does hold on what feels like a drive where they're struggling. And now it's Blair with a chance for a decent return. And he's got us across the 40. Some point soon here is when I'm going to have to make the decision whether or not we are trying to run the score up or get in the backups. But this one, the pitch out to Jeff Fontenot in a couple of yards. And maybe we just kind of combine things. We don't bring in the backups, but maybe we just exclusively run Durham Finch as a thank you for what he's done for this team as he finds the blocking and he's going to dive into the end zone. A 54-yard touchdown run just barely sneaks across the goal line. Some nifty running there. It's going to make it 38-6 to in what is a shaping up to be a great final game for the star running back man it's gonna be sad losing out on a guy who has done so much for this team uh hopefully we can find a good replacement stan williams is gonna need to have a good off season i think and hopefully we can get rj rivera because i think a good freshman back to replace him would be nice this is gonna be a run right four wide they kind of got us to jump i'm bringing pressure no Quarterback steps back to throw, maybe into coverage again. Blair drops his third easy interception of the game. That's the kind of stuff you want to see when you have like secondary recruits visiting and you need four deflections. But unfortunately for us, all we're looking for is interceptions right now. Well, just like that, it is third and seven. Uh, we'll bring the safeties in, try to do something. They step back to throw. Out route is open. We can't get the tackle in time. Just a little bit too slow to catch up to the tight end. Rob Kent on that one, which is a bit of a shame. Feels like they got to run at any moment. Now this one pressuring the quarterback. He's able to get that one away for an incompletion. And those are the ones where, you know, he saw the pressure of Carter coming. Carter who even in this alternate reality still won three postseason awards. Uh, when you got that guy bearing down on you, you know it's trouble. Over the middle, all too easy of a catch. We can't defend a slant route to save our lives, but he lost his forward progress, so it's not a first down. Well, this could see us uh, losing any chance of keeping them inside 10 points. I'm calling this one a run up the middle. We're bringing a lot of pressure. We're pressed up. Quarterback, all the time in the world, all too easy. Green gets the tackle. <laughs> you knew that one was going to happen, but I really just felt like they were going to run. The problem is that I know the second I stop bringing pressure is when they will run and it'll work successfully. So I'm just going to keep it going. Tight end goes in motion. Try to plug the gap. No, they're going to step back to pass again. I lost my man, but the pressure works. We force Wagner to throw it away again. And we got another second and 10. Man, how many opportunities for interceptions have we had on this drive and did not be able to take advantage of them as big as they tried to get us with the uh, snap count, but it's the offensive line moving first. Honestly, at this point, I'm hoping that the uh, secondary gets tired so that we can see uh, like our wide receivers come in as secondary players again. Oh gosh, I left this man wide open. Miller... Well, we got the stop. I just got bamboozled there. They went with a uh, switch on the man coverage, and I wasn't ready for it. All right, can we bring this pressure again? It really hasn't worked so far. Uh, play action. Was that a shovel pass? Was that supposed to be a mid screen? All I know is it's fourth and three. <laughs> it's the field goal formation out for Louisville. Uh, I don't know what this game is anymore. His kick is up, unable to block it, unfortunately, and it's good. 38-9 to with 2.22 left in the third. We are going to send Ron Johnson the third back to return this one. Uh, but again, it's time to just like burn the clock and allow Durham Finch to run the football. Unless Ron Johnson maybe has other plans, he's going to take it the distance. What is this bowl game? This is absolutely insane. Something that Frank Blair, unable to do all season long, Ron Johnson comes in and takes it all the way to the house. Some nifty running on that return. And just like that, 
It's going to be 45 to 9, so we hold them to a field goal and then score another touchdown of our own. And it is certainly going to be difficult to run the clock down when you don't have control of the football. They're going to try to return another one. Looks like decent space. They get out to the 25 with Jeremy Perry on that return. And I'll tell you what, it seems like there might be more Louisville fans in attendance, but certainly we're feeling pretty confident. They're throwing this one up and we're there to stop the screen finally. And I'm still just looking for that elusive sack. I have not been able to get to the quarterback with Carter so far in this game, which is normally a pretty surefire thing, but we're getting picked up a throw over the middle. Believe it or not, is all too easy for them to complete. That's frustrating. Let's just switch the cover two to a cover one lurk for the rest of this game. I want to try to defend against the slant route as much as possible. Quarterback thrown off his back foot. It's Frank Blair dropping his fourth interception of the game. I have never seen a defensive back more worthy of the Kirk Herb Street line. That's why you're not playing wide receiver. Second and 10. Finally, some pressure. We're going to hit the QB as he's throwing it, but it's complete for eight yards. Almost the first down. That was a big tackle. This is absurd. 32 pass attempts already still in the third quarter for this quarterback. Can we maybe get a chance to get the stop? Pressure not going to be there, and he dropped it. Oh, he dropped it. <laughs> this is one weird game. There have been three instances now where Louisville has had a huge play erased from a drop by the wide receivers. And now, once again, we're going to get a chance at a decent return. Frank Blair has the corner. If he can just make a couple of guys miss and maybe pick up a block, this could be great field position once again. And while I'm not done trying to score, it is going to be the conservative tempo. Start to burn this clock while giving Durham Finch every opportunity to run uh, possible and just let him stack up the yards on this game. Legendary player deserved the chance at a legendary performance his last time suiting up with us. Gray Boys legend picking up 12 yards. Gosh, excuse me there. Uh, 154 already. So that one's actually going to be the end of the third quarter. 45 to 9. You wonder what it would be if Frank Blair could maybe hold on to the football. Four dropped interceptions is insane. See if we can get into the end zone at least one more time. But this one probably is over. Six more minutes for the seniors on this team. We're going to try to continue to do well. Durham Finch, man, looked like he had a lot of space, but that gap closed almost instantly. Wouldn't be surprised if they're easily able to key in on the run, considering that's like all we're doing. But we'll give it a shot anyways. Try to run. Durham Finch cutting it back inside. Almost had another huge cut. If that diving tackle doesn't land, that's a touchdown. Crazy thing is even with a lot of these short runs, he's still averaging almost 10 yards per carry. Actually over 10 yards per carry as that was just a, a failure to block for him. And it's fourth down. Honestly, a little bit of a shame if you're Louisville, because we are going to go for this. This is a triple option. See if we make the right read. Courtney Smith falling forward to convert. And that's our 10th first down of the game. So we can just continue to run our offense. We are going to pass here, but I'm passing so that I can throw it to Durham Finch. Unfortunately, he didn't get anything out of that, but he did add a, uh, a reception to his career stats. I'm not sure if this is good advertising or bad advertising for our program. Showing the recruits that, uh, you know, if you become a legend for the team, you'll get every opportunity and all the respect possible, as there's Wilson just wide open for the touchdown. Durham had to take a little bit of a breather, so we throw it into the end zone. 52-9, to nine, and we burned already half of the fourth quarter on that drive. I think at this point, it's time, not for the second team offense, but for the second team defense to come in. And still, they actually have one more total yard than us because uh, our special teams has done so much. If you add in kick return and punt return yards, I think we'd blow these guys out of the water, but their offense technically moving the ball really well. Well, I'm going to allow our guy to do some work. Durham Finch in on defense. Well, you know, he has one interception, one pick six on his career that came... Just a little bit ago. Oh my gosh. Almost had a chance to be in position for another one there. Uh, he's not the other one. Jody Gentry is in on defense as well. So we're seeing quite a bit. Is this going to be the same play? No, they actually handed off the jet sweep. 
We get the tackle, but they do get their first down. This is like some really weird play calling from Louisville all of a sudden. You're getting blown out, and then you just decide to run jet sweep and fake jet sweep after fake jet sweep. Seems interesting. This one's the play action. Quarterback going to throw it away, though. <laughs> what a weird offensive pivot to make in the second half of the fourth quarter. Still got offensive players playing defense right now. Kind of a good way to send these guys out. Decent stop as they run Jared Smith again for three yards. And both Jody Gentry and Durham Finch are coming on the blitz on this one. If we could get a sack with Durham Finch, that would be something else. He does actually hit the quarterback as they run a slip screen and we stop them at the line. So fourth and seven of the defense holds. You know, who knows? Jody could get a nice return. We've had good returns with Blair uh, and Ron Johnson already. The third man up. Feels like he's going to get the job done. Some decent blocking. Trying to wait for the blockers to settle, but I just didn't give him enough time to get up to speed. And now with this final minute and 29, we can just hand the ball off to Durham Finch a couple more times and let him go into the record books as an absolute gray boy legend. 26 runs to just 11 passes for the team. And it's because at the end of the day, we didn't need to be passing the football. The running game was almost just unstoppable. So the final play of the game, Durham Finch is going to get another handoff. Can he get positive yards? He got the corner and he can end it with a first down and six yards. Uh, 179 on the day. So we can let the clock burn out there. And there it is. 52 to nine, the end of the season. Not the end that I would have wanted. You know, we were number nine in the country or number eight in the country. Uh, we were set to play a really good top 10 clubs in a bowl game. Everything broke. And instead we blow out uh, Louisville. Durham Finch with the play of the game as the player of the game. And probably our player of the season. We'll be sad to see him go. Uh, but he did well for us. Uh, he is, by the way, a viewer uh, named player. So tier two channel members and up can name a recruit once a season. Uh, and if you're interested in having your own Durham Finch Jr., you know, doing work on both the offense and the defense, consider joining as a uh, channel member. But anyways, yeah, he's player of the game. And that's a great way to end the season. Oh man, what a way to end the season. Again, so disappointed. I can't reiterate how much it hurts not to actually have the season that we had, uh, having to sim most of it. Um, our recruiting is going to suffer truly, but I'll see what I can do uh, with the database editor, see if maybe I can make it easier for us to pick up a couple of the guys that we had committed, uh, like RJ Rivera. But, uh, you know, maybe we just use it as a, an accidental handicap to make things a little bit more difficult for us in the future. Uh, offensively, again, they put up a lot of yards compared to us. Uh, they almost actually outgained us, but that's not including, um, like special teams, you know, punt and kick return yards. Uh, 52 9 defense played incredible. Uh, they gave up some big plays here and there, but shut them down when it mattered. All that I want to see is Frank Blair learn how to catch the dang football. Uh, player of the games, though. Durham Finch Jr., 18 carries for 179 yards and three touchdowns, including that beautiful 50-plus yarder. And then Logan is our defensive player of the game with his two tackles for loss and a sack. So we have won the Duke's Mayo Bowl. I feel like that is not the first time we've won it in this dynasty, and we did get our level up, so just a little bit delayed compared to the, the real one uh, that we had in previous iterations of this dynasty <laughs> um unfortunately that is gonna have to do it for this episode we will sim through the rest of the bowls and the rest of the playoffs uh in the next episode but if you enjoyed this one please leave a like let me know what you think we should do with our recruits now that things are a little bit broken and then subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we're nearing that 5,000 mark and i think that'd be pretty cool to hit after you've done all that, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.